While ACP has a built-in web server and web pages, which we've already seen, its primary function is as an automation engine. Regardless of how we enter our observing request, the end result is always an ACP observing plan. A plan is like a script, except in a way it's not, because instead of containing a sequence of instructions, it just contains the specifications of the images we want for each target. We'll see this in a minute. When the web browser is used to submit an observing request, it's turned into an ACP plan and sent to ACP for execution. Planner's sole purpose is to produce observing plan documents. It's completely separate from ACP and has no other connections to it. For the ultimate in flexibility, at the cost of additional work and understanding, you can create your plans directly using Notepad. No matter how it comes into being, an observing plan is just a text file that's fed into ACP one way or another and causes ACP to acquire the images specified in the plan. Now let's take a closer look at plans themselves. Here's an example of the simplest plan possible for an observatory that doesn't have any filters and won't use guiding. The first line specifies the exposure interval. The next line specifies the target and its coordinates. Notice that the coordinates are separated by tabs. IC1985 is in ACP's Deep Sky Catalog, so you could actually omit the coordinates in this case. If your camera has filters, you'll need to add a filter directive to specify which filter to use. To take more than one image of this target, add a count directive. Don't forget, though, that only the most advanced users will write their own plans. Let's look at this in action using ACP's browser form. Here's a request for 26 images in five colors of IC1985. Let's watch now when we run it through the browser interface. When the Acquire Images button is pressed, it not only starts the run but also shows us the observing plan it generated and sent to ACP's observing engine. Take a moment to look this over. The first directive, Autofocus, says to autofocus at the beginning of the run. AF Interval says to autofocus every 90 minutes thereafter. The rest of the directives applied in IC 1985, and if you look at it for a minute, you should be able to figure out how it works. Here's the same plan made up in ACP Planner for IC 1985, and you can see the same images. and the plan is the same one we saw generated by the browser. Once we've uploaded the plan through the browser or by the planner, we can run it in the browser by selecting the multiple objects plan and then selecting the plan that we uploaded and clicking acquire images. That's all there is to it. We can run a plan in the observatory the old-fashioned way by using the ACP console controls directly. Plans for multiple targets are just a simple extension to what we've already seen. Here's that IC1985 plan we've been looking at. To add another target, NGC2331, using all the same images and so forth, is a simple matter of adding another target line. Directives for IC1985 carry over to NGC2331. If we want a different set of images for NGC2331, we have to put those directives before that target line. By now you should have a good idea of the central role that observing plans play in ACP. Whether you enter a simple request through the browser, a more sophisticated request using our free planning tool, or for the most advanced planning, using Notepad to write your plans yourself, in all cases the plans are fed into ACP and turned into observations. In later videos we'll see how to use the planning tool to do almost anything you want including setting up for guided images with rotators and internal guiders. Thanks for listening and watching.